Once upon a time, there was a boy named Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin loved his name, even though it was hard for other people to say. He didn't care that it wasn't simple like Davy or Bobby, or easy to say like Timmy or Scotty. No, Rumpelstiltskin loved his name because it was special. And he also loved it because his mommy and daddy had chosen that name just for him. So when people had trouble saying it, he didn't get upset. He would just play a little game, like he did on the first day of school. That day, the teacher asked everyone to stand up in front of the class and introduce themselves. Rumpelstiltskin was last to go, but he wasn't scared. Proudly, he stood up in front of everyone and said, "My name is Rumpelstiltskin. I know it's a hard name to say, so I have a treat for the first person who can say it correctly." The whole class got very excited. A treat. They started practicing immediately. Can you help me practice their name? They said, "Rum, rum, 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 rumpy, rumpy." Keep trying," said Rumpelstiltskin. "Rumple, rumple, rumplestilly, rumplestilly." <gasps> You're getting closer. Rumplestiltskin. Yes. Rumplestiltskin. A little girl yelled from the back of the room. That's it! Clapped Rumpelstiltskin. You said my name. Hooray! And here's your treat. Rumpelstiltskin reached into his pocket and pulled out a shiny piece of gold. Ooh! Said the class. But the little girl from the back of the room said something else. She said, "I don't want a shiny piece of gold." Would you want a shiny piece of gold? Yeah. You don't? Asked Rumpelstiltskin. No, said the girl. I just want to be your friend. Oh, why? Thank you," said Rumpelstiltskin with a smile. "And I want to be your friend too." Rumpelstiltskin gave the girl a hug. One of the other boys in the class raised his hand and said, "I want to be your friend too, but I have a problem." "What's that?" asked Rumpelstiltskin. "I still can't say your name." Rumpelstiltskin laughed. "That's okay. I know that my name is very different. I have a rhyme I can teach you to help you remember it. Will you help me say this rhyme?" Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what he said. <gasps> Great," said the boy. Wait. So Rumpelstiltskin cleared his throat and said, "Even though it's different and doesn't sound the same, Rumpelstiltskin is my name." The rest of the class tried the rhyme. Can you try it with me? Okay. Even though it's different. Even though it's different. And doesn't sound the same. Doesn't sound the same. Rumpelstiltskin. Is my name. Is my name. Yes. Yay! They all clapped. That rhyme helps us remember how to say your name. Now we can all be friends. And they were. They were friends forever and ever. And those children never forgot how to say Rumpelstiltskin's name ever again. And they all lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> Good job. Thanks.
Let's have Bordy make a fruit for us today. That's a great idea. Let's go to Bordy the board. To the board. To the magical Bordy. One, two, three, four, five. Imagination comes alive. Hello, Fred and Fiona. What would you like me to draw today? I have an idea. Bordy, can you draw a tomato? That's not a tomato. A tomato is round. That's a cucumber. Let's try again. Well, that's not a tomato either. That's a watermelon. How do you know? Because a tomato is round and red. Hmm, red, huh? I think we can get a tomato. Are you ready, Fred? I'm ready. One, One two, two, three, go! go! Tomato! Oh, oh what joy! Oh, oh, what a sight! We were together and got it right! Whee! <laughs> hmm. Hey, hey, Fiona, what's wrong? You look sad. This is a nice tomato, but it's all by itself. I want to see where tomatoes come from. Oh, I know. <laughs> tomatoes in a house. A tomato on a cloud? That's not right. I think we can get it right this time. Are you ready? I'm ready. One, two, three, go! Oh, what joy! Oh, what a sight! We were together and got it right! Oh no, the tomatoes are all gone. That's okay. Bordy can help us find the tomatoes again. First, we saw tomatoes in a hat. But that's not right. We eat tomatoes. We don't wear them. Then we saw a tomato on a cloud. But tomatoes don't come from the sky. They come from the ground. <laughs> That's funny. But we finally got it right. Tomatoes grow on a vine that is in the ground. They are a fruit that we eat. Very good, Fiona. Thank you, Fred. Not too bad yourself. Goodbye, Fred and Fiona. See you next time. <laughs> Go 
like hop, hop, hop. Hmm. Hmm. Fuzzy ears. A twitchy nose. Going hop, hop, hop. Kids, today I'm going to tell you a story about making orange juice. This is Johnny, and he loves to drink orange juice. But wait, how do you make orange juice? It all starts with an orange tree. Juicy, yummy oranges grow on trees. Orange juice? Not yet. You're in the story later. Look, the oranges are no longer on the tree. Somebody must have picked them and put them in the basket. Now we can take the oranges home and use them to make orange juice. Not yet, orange juice. You don't belong in the basket. You have to wait till the end of the story. Hmm. Great! The oranges are on the table. Now we can start making orange juice. All we need is no, 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 orange juice. Not yet. We haven't squeezed the oranges. You come in after that. So as I was saying, all we need now is to cut the oranges in half and squeeze them to get all the juice out. Then we pour the juice into the glass. Orange juice, where are you? It's time. It's your turn to be in the story. There you go. A nice tall glass of orange juice, freshly squeezed. Now it's time to drink the orange juice. Mmm, orange juice is so yummy. Johnny loves orange juice. Bye. See you next time. <laughs> Itsy bitsy spider crawled up the water spout Down came the rain and washed the spider out out came the sun and dried up all the rain And the itsy bitsy spider called up the spout again
Mighty spider crawled up the water spout Down came the rain and washed the spider out Out came the sun and dried up all the rain And the itsy bitsy spider crawled up the spout again Mr. Peacock. It's a nice day, and he's taking a walk. Look at how beautiful he is. He has a long tail of feathers called a train. His body is blue, and it looks like he has a crown on his head. Look, there's Miss Peahen. She doesn't have a long train like Mr. Peacock. Only boy peacocks have a train. She's smaller, has a pretty neck, a little crown on her head, and feathers that are brown, white, and black. She's digging a bed in the ground so that she can take a little rest. Listen to that sound. Miss Peahen hears it. I wonder who it is. It's Mr. Peacock. Look at all those lovely colors. He's showing off to his friend. He is as proud as a peacock. Mr. Peacock's happy because Miss Peahen and her baby chicks are his new friends. It's time for lunch. All the new friends are going to eat now. Peacocks don't use a spoon and fork. They peck with their beaks. Miss Peahen is hungry. She hasn't eaten anything since breakfast. She's pecking seeds, fruits, plants, and even some insects off of the ground. There are all the friends. Mr. Peacock, Miss Peahen, and a little pea chick. Bon appetit, beautiful peacock family. Enjoy your lunch.
see we can be friends though we're never, never the, the same. same thanks to our thanks to our opposite game. game thanks to our opposite game, game.
Tilly, knock knock. Peekaboo! I see you. <laughs> Want to come over and play another game? Come on in then! This is my house. All of my neighborhood friends come by to visit me here. We have play dates. I love playing games with my friends. Sometimes I even play jokes on them. What's that? It's not coming from under there. Hmm, <laughs> the knocking isn't coming from in there either. I wonder what that knocking could be. Ribbit. Hmm. I know! It's a visitor knocking at the door! Oh me, oh my! I wonder who's come by. Who goes there? Ribbit, ribbit. Whoa! What a funny sound! Somebody's come over for a play date. But I can't tell who it is. Can you help me figure it out? Ribbit. Who's there? Let's listen. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Hmm. What animal sounds like that? That sounds like an animal that lives in a pond. Hey, I know an animal that says rivet and lives in a pond. A frog. Frogs love to say rivet. It must be my friend Freddy the Frog at the door. Have you come to visit the one and only Tilly? <laughs> That's me. Rivet, rivet. Why, yes, Tilly. I've come over to play. Can I come in? Ribbit. That is definitely a frog. Ribbit. Hi, Tilly. It's nice to see you. Ribbit. I knew that had to be you, Freddy. A big rivet from a friendly frog. Ribbit. We frogs sure do love to... Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> we figured it out. A big ribbit from a friendly frog. I'm glad you came over to play with me. Come by again. You never know who will visit next time. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Bye bye, ribbit. <laughs>